So we had this workshop which involved an online phase for about a month and then we had this uh, remote center face to face phase for another week. So now that the workshop is coming to an end, there are a certain takeaways I want you to take away from this workshop. In a way you could view this as what is the concluding remarks from this workshop and what should I do going forward. So these are my thoughts, I mean naturally you could have different thoughts. So online phase, we had an online phase which involved you watching videos and doing some quizzes. So my expectations from you when you watch the video is just that you understand and learn the concepts better. You may know some of the concepts but the idea is when you watch the videos maybe it helped you understand them better and if you have encountered new concepts, you have learned these new concepts as well. The end result of all this is I am hoping that this had helped you build the confidence to explain things better for your own students. So that is the idea of the videos such that you learn new things, you understand the existing things better so that you could explain the same things to your students better. So that was my expectations from the video. Now coming to the quizzes, again the idea of the quizzes is that they are going to aid your understanding. I am not too bothered about what is the score that you have got as part of this quizzes. It is more important, I mean I keep hearing these queries like uh, I answered it in this particular fashion but uh, because I did not specify like that you cut marks. Marks are not important at least at our level. What is more important is that you learned something in the process. So definitely the emphasis should be more on understanding the concepts better. So as long as you have given a sincere try that is what I value more. And again the conclusion of this is I am hoping that the way you attempted the quizzes it will increase your confidence in answering students questions. Not only that the other reason why I wanted you to do the quizzes is such that you learn how to set questions. Lot of the questions I see in uh, outside engineering colleges are based on rote memorization. Uh, that is not going to help much in someone learning a particular subject. You should focus on questions that test your understanding that set the students thinking. You should focus more on questions that let the students think rather than memorize and reproduce. So that is the idea for the quizzes. So basically to increase your confidence and to give you a feel for how to set questions. So among these videos and quizzes, the MP4s are freely available. I have already shared them with you. If you want to share it with your students, by all means go ahead and share it with them. But these MP4s do not come with quizzes and similarly the practice quizzes are also not freely available. The reason for this is as I said, we do want to use the platform as a means to ensure uh, that people log in, thereby we could track. Uh, their uh, interactivity, their understanding, so on so forth. So if I make everything free then we will lose out on that particular aspect. Uh, so that is why I made MP4s freely available. So at least that is in fact probably the important aspect. Uh, so that is there for you to use. Now this workshop also involved lab sessions. So what you had done during the five days is some concepts that you have learnt in theory, you saw them in practice. So the end result of this is that I want you to design and incorporate such labs as part of your teaching. This is I would say is very important because students get motivated mainly when they see things in practice. If you just talk and talk and talk, they just goes over your head. Even if you, even if they are not paying attention, once they start doing things which they have lot more interest in they will go back to the concept and learn it because without it they cannot do what is required of them. So it is very important to have a hands on learning as part of any course specifically courses like computer networks that are amenable to such hands on learning. One thing I would like to emphasize again is this word exposure. 
I have just given you an, an exposure to some of the things you could do. 3 hours is definitely not enough for learning many of these concepts. I have heard from some that I, we would have liked it better if you had uh, told uh, in more detail how some of the things are done. So I do not want even with my own students here, I do not want to get into the spoon feeding mode. In other words, for example, if you look at NS2, I could potentially give the command saying okay, this is the place where you should change the packet size. This is the place where you should change the queuing model. This is the place where you change the bandwidth. I could get into lot of those details, but that is spoon feeding. I do not want to do it because you need to learn to think on your own. You figure out on your own experiment, I mean what is the harm in changing some value, figuring out what is happening, seeing the outcome, then going back and rechanging it. That kind of experimentation is what is going to improve your learning. If I tell you everything, it is not going to uh, let you uh, learn in the process. You need to think for yourself. So going forward, as I said, what I have given is only an exposure. I do not want to uh, do anything more than that. Going forward, you need to take the onus on yourself. You need to spend lot more time. In fact, each lab concept that was covered, you have to spend additional few days for you to master it, perfect it, understand it thoroughly and then reuse it as part of your course. Believe me, if you just take something like this, give it to your students, you will be asked all kind of questions by the students. If you do not know the concept, you cannot answer them and often, I mean, uh, some things if you do not know, I, I have no issue saying I do not know, but some things you are expected to know and you do not know, uh, you feel a bit ashamed and students can ask all kinds of questions. So you need to be very confident. Uh, before you tackle the students. So I would sincerely request that all these labs please incorporate as part of your teaching and also spend lot of additional time yourself first understanding what the labs uh, concepts are, then you expose it to the students. That way you will feel lot more confident. So the workshop uh, during the face to face interaction also involved uh, some of the teaching methodology since we are all teachers. It is important to experiment to reach out to the students better. So as part of this we covered flipped classroom, we covered think pair share, there was also a talk on um, handling projects, presentations, reports. Something that I did not mention explicitly uh, but uh, which I felt should have also been mentioned is this peer instruction. So let me just spend uh, 2 minutes on it. So peer instruction is a method like think pair share, but it is a little bit different. So this is how a peer instruction happens. So instructor poses a multiple choice question and then the students think on the question and students answer the question. Typically they are committing to an individual answer you can handle via clickers. But even if you do not have clickers just by a show of hands, you can just say raise your hands whoever has uh, answer A raise your hand, answer B raise your hand, answer C raise your hand and accordingly you can figure out what the majority is. Then after students commit to an answer, instructor comments on some of the responses and then asks the students to discuss the solution among themselves. The reason why it is called peer instruction is they are learning from their peers. So they may have come up with answer A whereas their neighbor may have come up with answer B then they are both going to discuss why you thought A, why he thought B and then finally converge to a common answer. So then the students are again asked the same question and then the students again vote based on the, their modified understanding. Typically in this process majority will converge and then the instructor goes through the answers, ties up any loose ends and moves on to the next concept. So this is the idea of peer instruction. So what I will do is I am going to share with you a few video, a video on peer instruction as well as some constructors for peer instruction much like I shared with you think pair share. So the idea is that all these techniques that you have learnt, we would like you to incorporate them as part of your teaching and interaction with students. So this educational technology is again something recent, there are lot of uh, research that is happening in this space. Earlier it was okay for a teacher to, to go to a class, tell 
uh, whatever he knows in a smooth fashion and the students ask questions you clarify them. It has been proven that this alone is not enough for students to understand things better. Uh, you need to do active learning. In other words, you have to do something more than that if you want your students to learn better. And these are some of those techniques, think, pair, share, peer instruction, um, so on and so forth. So please try to incorporate them as part of your uh, teaching. So now that the workshop is coming to a close, going forward, what is it that we expect you to do? One is definitely please fill this online survey, you can do it today afternoon or you can do it after you go back also, this will be there until uh, July 11th. Uh, so please fill, a, fill the survey using your Moodle accounts. Apart from this, you are also required to do a homework. So this one is in each remote centers, we would want the participants to form groups of three or four and you could choose. I had earlier mentioned 4, now I have made it 5. You could choose any of these concepts. You could use think, pair, share resources. By the way, when you did the think, pair, share, I know you have submitted on Moodle some uh, of these uh, resources. You could reuse the same resource when you are resubmitting it in this. So there is nothing stopping you from using the same resource again. So you could reuse the resource, but as I mentioned, we do not want one resource. We want at least four such resources when you are doing think, pair, share. Similarly, I will share with you the videos on peer instruction and I also told you how peer instruction works. You could do some uh, concepts on peer instruction as well, but if you are picking up this, I would encourage you, in fact, you should watch the video before you do this. Um, it is also something interesting, so you could do peer instruction resources. You could also design new questions for a question bank. Basically the idea here is one could use this question banks in quizzing the students uh, as part of midterms, final or uh, the regular uh, quizzes. So if you uh, incorporate this, um, we will collect such question banks. Naturally we want the question bank to have certain structure. In other words, you should identify what topic. So you could, you should say physical layer. Within physical layer, this falls under the concept of encoding. So you should have such keywords associated with uh, each question bank. I will get into more details. I will also send a very detailed email to all the participants on uh, how to submit these things, what all to specify as part of these activities. You could also animate networking concepts in which case you have to submit some code uh, along with the report that specifies how this animation, uh, what is it that you want to convey via the animation. So we would like at least three concepts as part of uh, network animation. You could also design the lab exercises or project descriptions like the ones you have seen in the four afternoons. Uh, those also if you are doing, we would like at least three such uh, uh, lab exercises or project descriptions. So this is the things you could potentially do. We would like you to work on this, you have about two weeks going forward, uh, spend time, finish this um, activities and submit it to your workshop coordinator by July 20th and the workshop coordinator is going to share the homework with us. What we will do is we will sort out the uh, submissions and we will share back with you whatever you have shared. I mean we will clean it up a little bit, maybe some things which are not correct we will remove, some things which are good we will uh, fine tune it and we will share all these resources with all of you so that you could potentially use them in your own teaching. So this is a community effort, if you, communi if you contribute others will benefit, if they contribute you will benefit. So please do not slack off. Uh, as I said, well slacking off probably won't arise because as I said uh, certification is a function of these two things. I want you to do well in the online practice problems. I am not expecting you to score full upon full, but at the same time you should spend enough effort that you understood at least some concepts well that you had obtain a decent score. Uh, the deadline for this as I said, you lot of you had lot of issues with the Bodhi tree platform. So I am going to extend the deadline to July 20th. I will talk about Bodhi tree also a little bit uh, going forward. And we also expect you to do a good job in this post workshop homework. The deadlines for both are the same. After this phase, we have to uh, ensure that everyone has done these two things. 
Uh, so you can expect your certificates only by August end. So both the three as I said had a lot of issues and again I would like to apologize for this. It is not that these were not anticipated but still we wanted to share the content with you because lot of resources have been created, the videos especially which I felt will be better. So often what happens is uh, if there is a face to face I tell some concepts you learn but then once you are out uh, it is kind of lost. If you have these videos they go in through a lot of detail and uh, you could rewatch them many times and understand them uh, much better. So videos are better that way so I wanted to share with you the videos hence I decided that I should use this platform. It ran into lot of issues I am not saying the issues have gone away we may still face some more issues. So what I am going to do is this bodhitree.csc.itb.ac.in was used for the workshop coordinators. I am going to bring the workshop coordinators platform down in other words the workshop coordinators will not be able to access the bodhitree.csc.itb.ac.in for the workshop uh, platform. I mean I will clarify this soon what it means is that the workshop coordinator scores or which questions they answered, which questions they did not answer, what is the score that they got all that information is going to get lost. Now what we are going to do in turn is we are going to open two servers one is the usual 14.139.97.83 uh, this is what you are all using until now but apart from this we will use this bodhitree.csc.itb.ac.in to migrate the database from 14 in here. In other words all the scores that you have used as part of the online phase are preserved it is not that they start from 0 you have to redo everything that is not the case we are just reproducing or replicating the database from 14.139.97.83 to Bodhi tree. So there are two servers that are available these two servers have a replicated database but that said the remote centers will be split between the two servers. So for example if remote center 1001 has been assigned to 14.139.97.83 he can only log in to 14.139.97.83 he cannot log in to bodhitree.csc.itb.ac.in. So this information as to which remote center has been assigned to which server I will pass that information to you again with lot of details. Uh, so workshop coordinators please pay attention ensure that your participants are aware of this in other words there will be two servers running each server will serve only a subset of the remote centers that information we will pass to all ensure that they are accessing the right server and as I mentioned earlier their scores will all be preserved so they do not have to redo everything again all you need to do is continue on from where you left off on the particular server. The workshop coordinators unfortunately your scores will be wiped out because the context is lost there is no more context for this but you also the workshop coordinators also have a login into these two servers based on your remote center. So you could access the videos access the quizzes still except that your scores are not there as part of the servers. Uh, so these servers will be kept open until the deadline which is uh, July 20th after that maybe after a few days after that we are going to bring it down. So thanks for your uh, cooperation. So with that I will end uh, whatever it is I wanted to convey.